Okay, today we're going to be doing some sniper testing. And we have secured the services of a United States Marine Corps scout sniper who's still operational. And he's going to be wearing a balaclava. And for that reason, we're going to introduce him only as Mike. Mike's missions are so critical, we must obscure his identity for the test. One quiet professional in the right place at the right time can end wars before they start. One shot. One kill. Marine Scout Sniper. Well, what we've done here is we've made a sniper coffin. We've got over here a plexiglass box, and we're going to put you in this box. It's got a gun port on it right here. Your rifle will come through the gun port, and you'll be shooting at a target 100 feet away. Explain to me this uh, pulling a trigger off between heartbeats thing. You can feel your heartbeat basically rebounding off the surface that you're resting on. And I guess you're just timing the shot between the beats that you're already feeling. Yes. Now, you've operated over in the Middle East, right? So you're used to the heat. Correct. OK. To test the sharpshooter's breaking point under the combat conditions of the Middle East, the fight science crew will raise the stakes and the temperature. Extreme heat does a lot to the body. Obvious things like dehydration are some of the first things that come to mind. And that, of course, increases heart rate, uh, breathing rate. Pretty hot in there, David? It's uh, up, up at 130 degrees. It's right up there. Doug Martin assembles the safety team and reviews the dangers of firing live rounds in the lab. Shooting guns indoors is not exactly a safe endeavor. Eyes and ears. Everybody needs to have eye protection on. If there's a safety violation or if there's a, an emergency where there's an injury, I'll call Ed in, the, the medic. All right, let's have a safe shoot. The sniper wears a bio harness to monitor his heart rate and breathing so the scientists can measure his performance under extreme combat conditions. He will also be swallowing a pill that measures his core body temperature. I was a little worried swallowing a white pill before they throw me in a box called a sniper coffin. High-tech thermal imaging will project the sniper's core body temperatures onto a monitor so scientists can track his vitals. If his core temperature rises, so will his heart rate, leaving him less time to shoot between beats. You know, what's interesting is under all this stress, your heart rate's still nice and, nice and baseline, nice and mellow. The sniper's been in the 130-degree heat chamber for 20 minutes. His core temperature has risen by one degree, but he's not focusing on the heat. He's focusing on his breathing. OK, this is a live shot. You know, we're going to see if we can distinguish truth from legend and see if a sniper can actually shoot between heartbeats. Three, two, one, fire. Up it on safe? Whew. OK, you want to see how you did? Yeah. All right, can you run the high speed, please? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nicely done. The shot is dead on. An easy distance for a sniper. But was it between heartbeats? Well, you actually did it. And our rhythm shows a uh, smack between heartbeats, like you had it perfectly timed. And I was able to keep my heart rate under control by relaxing, diaphragmatic breathing, clearing your mind, thinking about nothing but what's right around you. So how did Mike shoot between heartbeats? In the 130-degree coffin, Mike's heart beats 135 times per minute. With each beat, a surge of blood fills the vessels. As the blood reaches the trigger finger, it swells with each pulse. This pulse is enough movement to cause a slight deviation in the sniper's shot, making the difference between a direct hit or a missed target. To pull off an accurate shot, Mike must slow down his heart rate. First, he decreases his respiratory rate by taking extended full diaphragmatic breaths. He gradually reduces his breathing from 18 breaths per minute to approximately six. Within a few minutes, he lowers his heart rate to 84 beats per minute. This creates more time to shoot between heartbeats. Timing is everything. Immediately after Mike feels his heartbeat reverberate off the surface he's resting on, he pulls the trigger, shooting his weapon between beats and hitting his target dead on.